Yeah, um, Larry Jackson was one of the first ones that come to mind. He he taught me a lot of stuff, and um, I remember when he told me it's time it's time not to be that young guy no more. You gotta step up. Like you're not a little bro no more. And just him saying that in itself helped me gave me the confidence to take the next step into that leadership role. And of course, also Michael's and OJ, uh, Imir. He gave me probably some of the best advice. Uh, you know, he told me in this game, everyone gets got. You're playing up against great, great, great <coughs> competition. So in this game, everyone gets got, but you got to get yours when they get there. I know you've probably been asked mm -hmm. this a few times before. Just can you walk us through your kind of the process of how you landed at Iowa? What was, you know, the, the draw that got you to this point? Um, so when I transitioned out of basketball my sophomore year, 16, I actually played in the basketball tournament that early early that spring or late spring and I decided to go over to play football and when I was doing my research on where it is I felt as though it would fit me and I dug deep into the coaches and kind of found out who they were through a through a far lens you know on the internet and when I got a chance to speak to them in person it was exactly as advertised and as I look back through their resume of defensive backs I felt as though there's a lot of guys with a similar resume as me the Josh Jacksons the the Desmond Kings, you know, Bob Sanders, we are all guys who didn't have many Power Five offers, but came in, maximized the opportunity, and continued to grow. Were you only playing basketball at the time, or were you playing both football and basketball yourself? Uh, I was only playing basketball from my seventh to my sophomore year. So you started playing football full time your junior year of high school. Yeah, but I played in Mighty Might, what we called it back in the day. <laughs> so like Pop Warner type yeah, stuff. Yeah, Pop Warner. That's crazy. I mean, I guess. Going from a junior year not playing in high school until then to getting a D1 offer like that, I mean, did you ever think that would be a possibility when you made the switch? Uh, yeah, that was the goal from the jump. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy because I told them I'm going to Iowa and I haven't been played a snap of a real football yet, quote unquote. But I continued just to listen to them, use that fuel as fire, continue to work, put my head down, try to separate myself, be the first one in, make sure I have a new team, make sure I'm the last one out. Uh, try to control all the controllables and ultimately kept my front front sight focus and focus on that goal was to be an Iowa Hawkeye and came up here, got real familiar with the coaching staff and we're here. How much did the adversity that you faced, whether it be injuries or other adversity, how much has that kind of shaped who you are now? Uh, it all shaped who I am from, like life wasn't easy early and you know, I probably see some things a lot of grown men haven't seen as a kid and I think it all, I'm a big, firm believer everything happens for a reason, and that prepared me for this moment now. And looking back on it, it's some tough times, but it, 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 they say that the Lord <clears throat> has his toughest battles for his toughest soldiers. And that's something that keeps me going because everything, like I, feel, like I said, everything, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Kirk a few weeks ago was talking about your, your first trip here and just getting to know you, and he talked about being really struck by the the commute you had every day to school. Did you walk mm -hmm. us through what it was like just to get into school every day? Uh, so that, the big first big commute I had from school, I went to school in Bolingbrook, which is a suburb, in a Chicago land suburb, probably like 35 minutes out, but you know, we in Chicago, it's traffic, so it really turned into an hour. So we leave out, I lived on the south side of Chicago, so we leave out probably an hour and 30 minutes prior, so that's probably why I'm an early bird. We got up at like six in the morning, my mom would drop us off at school, she'd go to work, and after school, I go to my aunt's house, wait till my mom gets off work, and we drive out to the city. We did that multiple times. And also, when I to Montini, I take the train. So from the South Side of Chicago, I take the bus to the Red Line, I take the Red Line to the Blue Line, and I get picked up by a friend. Up until I actually started staying with a friend, and that happened. But I've been I've been commuting for a long time. You know, that's nothing to me. I go 